Lessons from Ratan Tata's entrepreneurial drive and vision. In 1999, Tata Motors was on the verge of selling its passenger car division to Ford Motors after the Tata Indica launched a year earlier stumbled. The follow-up discussions at Ford's Detroit headquarters in the United States didn't go well. According to one account, Tata Motors officials, which included Ratan Tata, were insulted by some of the disparaging comments about the company and the car project. Ratan Tata returned to India from the meeting, apparently more determined to see the project through. And roughly eight years later, Tata Motors bought Jaguar Land Rover from Ford. Back to the Tata Indica. The problems were mounting. Complaints about the engine and high noise and vibration levels in the car, among others, were pouring in. In some cases, customers even turned violent. And this was a diesel car, by the way. Sales dropped. And in 2000-2001, Tata Motors announced a 500 crore rupee loss. The company had already invested about 1,700 crores in the project. The blame landed on Ratan Tata for thinking too big. He called an emergency meeting at the Taj president in Mumbai's Kaf Parade to take stock. Team members were encouraged to speak freely and going by accounts, there was more self-criticism than blame. The net result was that a massive retrofit was launched for some 45,000 Tata Indica cars with 45 parts being repaired free of cost. Customer meets were held and they were heard out patiently and feedback was collected. A new car was already being worked on. The design saw some changes and a Tata Indica V2 was launched in 2001, which went on to do what the original car aspired for, promised and much more. Ratan Tata would return with a 1 lakh rupee car in 2009, which again ran into problems, both internal and external, which in some ways were more serious because eventually that project was wound down. There are many aspects of the late Ratan Tata's personality at play. For one, his audacious goals, which stretch way beyond most entrepreneurs would even dare dream or leave alone attempt. Remember, product entrepreneurs are rare in India. I do recognize the fact that software products are also products, but this is not the same league. It takes some gumption and courage to attempt a product that has to prove itself day after day on the roads of the kind we have in India. If something does not work, you have to trust the teams you entrusted the build to in the first place to find solutions. That takes trust and patience at a time when time is running out in the marketplace. And finally, when Tata may have got credit for the group's many successes in his active tenure at the Tata Group, he never really sought the limelight and his colleagues, whether in cars, software, hotels or steel, felt a sense of constant ownership that I see and appears to blast even after retirement. Tata, of course, set a trailblazing path with the global acquisitions of brands like Jaguar Land Rover, Chorus, Daewoo and Tetley as part of his global vision. But that was another aspect of the vastness of his vision to grow and succeed. But all of that arose from his desire to take on bigger challenges. All Tata employees and acquaintances speak of Ratan Tata's humility and alignment with the traditional Tata Group principles of serving society along with creating value for shareholders. His tenure has ticked all boxes and perhaps more. In this time of confusing definitions of entrepreneurship and success, his life and career offer important insights into the true nature and role of entrepreneurship and doing business of the kind that shapes not just companies, but nations.